Hey Universe, uh, this is DPZ here again, and yeah, I'm going to be giving you guys not one, not two, but three comic book reviews, because there really wasn't a lot for me to say about all of them collectively, so I figured uh, might as well try something new and give you a three comic uh, review. So, here you go. And today, it's going to be all indie books that were sent to us by our good friend here on the channel, Mount Vernon Kid. Chris, uh, hope you're watching. Uh, yeah, so, uh, the three books I'm going to be talking about are all volume ones by the name of The Agency, Vamp Blade, and Yin Yang. So, let's start to kick things off with The Agency. Now, The Agency was from a comic company called Tap, which I had never heard. It was It's a very self-made, independent company. And basically, The Agency what is this um, magical group that is like they're they're heroes for hire and deal with all kinds of magical groups think like Constantine Incorporated imagine if Constantine went the route of Batman Incorporated that's kind of what we're looking at here and uh, they're they're hired to investigate a group called the the Pharaoh Club which are all people like inspired by the Egyptian gods which the Pharaoh Club are a really cool vil a villain group I really like them at doing at doing anything with the Egyptian mythology is really fun in my book. Um, the uh, magic that all the character use all the characters use are pretty fun. Like they each have their own forms of magic, they their own forms of uh, styles and what have you. Like some of them use defensive magic, some of you use them use elemental magic. Um, but a lot of them do have a lot of power to them. And we're told through this story through the eyes of this recruit who has, like, this power that the, um, the Pharaoh Club wants. Um, but it's all around pretty good story. The artwork's pretty good, too. Um, independent artwork, especially, like, super independent artwork, um, is always very leery to me. Like, sometimes it's like, wow, this looks really janky. But here... Um, this, for what it is, this is a very well done, put together story, and the artwork is very well done. I highly, uh, enjoyed this. This was, a uh, a lot of fun. This felt very, the agency felt very professional. It was a very good read. So, yeah, this was a, de uh, this is a definite, uh, go check it out if you can, if you can find the trade, uh, I think on Amazon or somewhere of that nature. But anyway, let's move on now to, uh, Vamp Blade. Now, Vamp Blade comes from Danger, La uh, from, um, uh, uh, Action Labs from Action Labs, and they also they're best known for like their for very kind of risque comics like um, Dollface, and uh, I think they also do the Puppet Master comics as well. They also do this comic known as Zombie Tramp, and this spun out of Zombie Tramp. Um, Vamp Blade tells the story of a girl named Katie who, after a mob hit, um, comes in contact with a mystical pair of blades, and now she's fading, facing uh, dil I'm not making this up, by the way, I am in no way, shape, or form making this up, dildo-shaped space vampires that only she can see. And she's put in this very, like, risk, like, very, very, uh, interesting costume that comes on her like a symbiote. It's very, this whole comic, Vamp Blade is very much a parody of, like, night, like, extreme, edgy 90s comics, and they very much, like, they know what kind of, what I like about it is that this very, this, um, this series feels like it really, um, it makes fun of it, but in a fun way. Like, it's not in the, the 90, like, oh, the 90s were bad com full of bad comic ideas, and they were, justifiably. But this one is not, like, totally mean-spirited to it. it. It's like poking good fun at it. Um, this is a comic I do not recommend for kids. There is some serious swearing, and um, there's also some sex scenes. There's also nudity. This is a very, you know for adults comic. This is a very for adults comic, and it's very much what I, what I also like about it is that it knows what it wants to be and doesn't try to be anything else. It just goes on its merry way, and we can't judge it for that. Um, the action's pretty fun. The uh, writing's pretty, you know, the writing's pretty solid. Because, again, it's very much making fun of, and it knows what it is. Like, it knows, and it makes the ref references to bad 90s comics. So, I can't really fault it for, you know being, you know, clever in that regard of just being like, yeah, we know this is a, this is very much like a bad 90s comic, and we're just gonna keep on that, so, yeah, that was a, you know, that was a, this was a pretty fun comic, but remember, just be of age when you read, you know, when you read this comic. And finally, we have, uh, from Arachna Comics, 
or Arcana comics. No, it's Arachna. Yeah, Arachna. Yin Yang. Now, Yin Yang tells the story of two metahumans, uh, metahuman hitmen who live in a superhero world where the greatest superhero has been killed by this villainess named the Widowmaker. And the two of them are hired to take down Wid Widowmaker, but the problem is, is that they soon stumble upon, like, this big, uh conspiracy that is going to drag the whole world and the metahuman community to its knees. Uh, this comic's fine. It's it's alright. It's nothing to come home to. It does feel like a bad... What Vampire did was, like, it was a 90s comic. It felt like a 90s comic, but it was making fun of those tropes. This one embraces the 90s comics tropes. Like, this one just really feels like it's trying really hard to be a, you know, a 90s comic and even be mean-spirited to the big two, you know, Marvel and DC. There's some direct, there's some characters in here who are clearly inspired by, um, Marvel and DC characters, especially one who is completely like Doctor Doom. Uh, one is just straight up Doctor Doom. Um, they just call him something else. But yeah, this comic feels really really, um, just mean-spirited. And I, you know, I'm fine with comics, you know, make, you know, uh, sometimes doing that of being, you know, doing stuff with, with characters who are like, uh, similes of certain Marvel and DC characters. As long, you know, even Deathmatch, which I reviewed on here a while ago, did that. It very much did that, and it was kind of mean-spirited in places, but this one is just completely mean-spirited. Like, we're looking at the boys, level, uh, Garth Ennis is the boys level of just mean spiritedness in that comic. The artwork's fine, but it is trying, this whole comic is trying like way too hard to be a 90s book in all the wrong ways. So, yeah, that's my, this is my problem. That's kind of a problem I had with it. It was just hard to read because it was just trying to be so extreme and tries to over, like it tries to be bigger than it wants to be. Um, so yeah, that was kind of a problem I had with it, but all in all, um, of the three, I would highly recommend The Agency. The Agency was definitely the best of the three. Uh, Vampire 2, just, to, you know, if you're looking for fun, bloody action, and if you are of age, I'd recommend that. Yin Yang, it's def I'm going to have to say skip. Sorry about that, Chris, but yeah, this is, that one's definitely a skip. But this, but uh, Vampire would be a check out, as well as especially The Agency. Of the three, The Agency was definitely my uh, favorite of the three. So there you go, guys. That is pretty much three comic reviews in one moment. So you guys uh, tell us in the comments below if you've read these comics or if you're interested in reading these comics. Just comment below. Let us know here. And once again, thanks, Chris, for this contribution. I'm DPZ, and we will see you right here once more in the universe.